So this episode, we're going to look at key value files. This is a way that you can store data in files that's going to be loaded up when your game mode starts, such as items, abilities, heroes, and enemy units. Now in this episode, we're going to particularly look at spawning in a custom unit that we're going to create, like an enemy unit. So let's go and open up the hammer, which where we left off last time. So what we want to do is go file open, or we can go to recent files and find our recent map that we've opened here. Otherwise, if you don't know where your map is located, if you go into your project folder and click on maps, and then it'll be whatever the name of your map is. In this case, it's my map underscore dot V map. So when this loads up, I'm going to run it. Now that it's loaded, we have an ax that spawns in up here at this location. And when I attack him, he comes and starts attacking me afterwards. He aggroes onto me. Now what we want to do is change what axe is and we're going to change him to a custom unit. And how are we going to do something along the lines? Well, we're going to have to change the data that he's receiving. So now let's go into our project folder. And in here, there's a folder called scripts. And then there's two more folders, one called NPC and the other one called vscripts. In NPC, we have our KV files, which is storing our data. And in here, we have our vscripts, which will be doing our Lua files. Right now, we're going to look at our Lua file, which is addongamemode.lua. And this is a required name for this file. So I recommend heavily that you do not rename this. Now, I've already opened it in my text editor. As you saw last time in the previous episode, I wrote this line of code. This is the only thing that I added to it called create unit by name. It spawns in axe at a certain location. And what we're going to do is change this to a custom unit that we are going to create with data. So let's go into our NPC folder and open up uh, NPC units custom. Now let's drag and drop this in. Now this is our data file for custom units. Fortunately for us, Valve already have an example made for us. Now let's look at the syntax of a key value file. On the very first line here, we have a really good example of a comment. Everything after two forward slashes is considered a comment and it's not evaluated. Then we have a container and this container is called Dota units. And this is defined by an open curly bracket and then a closing one. So the closing one is down here at the very end of the file and everything in that can define certain key values or even can contain other containers. So in this case, we actually have a container here called uh, NPC Dota Creature Null Assassin. And this Null Assassin is a unit that Valve have created for us, which is really nice because we're going to use it in a minute. And down here then inside in this container, we have key values. So on the left hand side, we have a key. And on the right hand side, we have a value. Now the value is just something that we can use and reference. And all of these are predefined. And instead of memorizing all of them off, you usually look at a file like this copy and paste it in and change the stuff that you need because there's so many of them. So for example, this key is called model and this is the name of the file. Very self-explanatory. We have down here our abilities. So ability one, ability two, ability three, ability four. These are the different slots. And as you see, these are empty. So it means that this unit has no abilities. If you have physical armor is set to one, you have the attack damage of maximum and minimum is set to 36 and 30. Uh, and you have just a bunch of other data stuff to here that's very self-explanatory for now. And let's say there was something that we didn't really like that we wanted to change or we didn't want to have even included in the game and use the default value. What we can do is comment this out. And now that line bounty XP is not going to be evaluated anymore. And it'll use the default values within Dota. Now we're not going to do anything with this file yet. And what we're going to do is take the name of this file and copy it. And we're going to go back to our add on game.lua in our code. And where we were spawning X, we're going to change this now to our unit. And we need to make sure that the syntax is correct. And here it's going to spawn this null assassin instead. So let's go to our uh, back to our hammer and we're going to run. And this time we only have to do a skip build because we're not adding or change. We're only changing or modifying existing files that the game already knows. 
So now that our custom game has started up, we'll have a look and here's the Null Assassin spawns in. Now if we click on the Null Assassin and look at him, he has 75 health and as you see he has 33 to 36 damage. You can see the stats here that come up when you hover over this area on the heads up display. And if we go back and we change something, we can change anything we want to uh, do with this hero. Um, so let's say his stats, starting health, we can set this to 500. Uh, and when we restart the game mode, his health will have 500. Now, the other thing that I wanted to just look at was just some of these values that we're looking at as well, the key values. So see how this unit is attacking you? He's firing a spear at you, and this spear is a projectile, uh, and the projectile has a particle effect, and this is what would explain this up here. So up here we have a model, which is the 3D model for the unit. Down here there was somewhere where we're going with particle effect, uh, projectile model this is the one this line here so the particle system model for the projectile is what this is and it's we can also make him attack as his projectiles travel at a faster range with this one and you'll also notice up here he was set to a ranged hero so this only works for ranged heroes for in this example so this is just explaining some of the keys that are there in place as well now this unit is kind of boring at the moment and we're going to change him and make him a lot more interesting. So let's say we want to spawn him and make him really big. Uh, this is often used for bosses you might see in custom games. So model scale is here and we're going to make him bigger. So he's currently set to 0 0.9. We're going to make him at the scale of 3, meaning that he's going to be 3 times bigger than his basic model. Now, we'll also see that this name here is really long and it's not really a very good description of what we want to call him. We're going to instead call him John Boy. And what we need to do is update the name within our file. And we should probably edit this first in our file. So in here where it says NPC Dota Creature Null Assassin, we change this to John Boy. Now this name is the name of our unit now, the default name. And this name does not have to be the same as the display name in Dota itself. We'll get to that different at a different point to deal with how the names are displayed in Dota. And if we look right now in a Dota, does it give me a right name? It says here's the name. It's like Dota underscore creature null assassin. You can't even um what happens when you ping him? Let's see, let's see. It says Enemy NPC Dota creature, Null Assassin, has 100% HP. So you see that he doesn't have like a name yet. We'll get to that in future episodes, but that's okay for now. What we're gonna do is because we changed this stuff, we can just restart our custom game again. So let's go back in here and we're gonna run and do a skip build again. Now we're in here and we see that he's really big and he also has 500 health. Now we'll attack him. And we'll see that he's still attacking us like normally he would and chase after us. Now that is just a really basic unit within Dota.